Hello, welcome to Mr. Yule's Chemistry Channel. Today you will watch the very first video I ever made on YouTube. Today we're going to study AP Chemistry Investigation Number 1. We're going to use Beer's Law to determine the concentration of blue dye number 1 in a sports drink. It's a pretty exciting lab. I hope you enjoy it. But first, here's a video from my kiddos. So what do you think? Those kids are pretty cute, huh? Let me know. What do you think? Should I keep them in the video? Show more of them? Or do you think I should cut them out? Comment down below. Let me know. So let's start to go through some of this equipment. The first thing that you want to see is that we have our sports drink. This is the sports drink that we're going to try and determine the concentration of the blue dye number one in it. In order to figure out the concentration of the blue dye in the sports drink, we have to have a stock solution of blue dye number one. So this stock solution I made myself, it is 7.3 micromolar concentration. It's also known as 7.3 times 10 to the negative sixth molar. So we know this concentration. This is the solution that we're going to use to then make all of our dilutions of lower concentrations of blue dye number one. So what we're going to use is some distilled water to dilute that blue dye number one. We've got a beaker next to the distilled water. We've got a more pipette. And you'll notice that on the more pipette, we have little graduation marks, zero milliliters, one milliliters, two milliliters. And we'll use that to precisely add uh, very specific amounts of our stock solution and water into those test tubes so that we'll know the concentration of the resulting solutions. We're going to use the pipette bulb um, on the more pipette to suck the, the stock solution into the pipette. Um, you can see that you can squeeze the bulb. It's got three valves on it, A, S, and E, um, to cause the liquid to be sucked up into the pipette or uh, released out of it. We're going to make some solutions in those test tubes and sitting on that rack. You can see here the different solutions that we're going to make. Uh, so obviously we have our stock solution, blue dye number one on the left. And then in each of the test tubes, we'll have solutions two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And you can see that as you go to the right down this test tube rack, you're going to decrease the amount of the stock that goes into each one and increase the amount of water. We're going to be more dilute for the solutions on the right. So the next thing is we're going to use the micro pipette there on the left side of the table, and we're going to move those solutions from the test tube into the cuvette. The cuvette is this little plastic container, and we're gonna we're gonna fill it with each of our different solutions, and then we're gonna take that cuvette and we're gonna stick it inside the spectrophotometer. But before we can do that, we've got to make sure it's nice and clean. We don't want any smudges on it, so we're gonna clean it with these things that are called Kim wipes. Again, the cuvette's gonna go inside the spectrophotometer, and what this tool does is it shines light through the solution. And there's a detector that determines how much of the light was absorbed by the solution. The more light that gets absorbed by the solution, the greater the blue dye concentration was. And so we'll be able to use those absorbance values to create what's called a calibration curve and perform our Beer's Law experiment. Now that we know what all the equipment is called, we'll go ahead and watch our experimenter create our diluted solutions of the blue dye number one. What you see the experimenter doing now is attaching the pipette bulb to the pipette so that she can uh, suck up some of the stock solution into the more pipette. She's going to suck up the, the stock solution up to the zero mark on the more pipette so that she can then move it over to the test tubes to dispense into the different test tubes. So you can see here, the solution is being drawn up into the pipette, and she's filled it up to the level that marks zero milliliters. Just go ahead and move that over to the first test tube. This is solution two, we're calling it in your data table. She's going to go ahead and dispense eight milliliters of the stock solution into that test tube there. Go ahead and zoom in on it for you. You can see that she's letting the the stock solution drain out all the way down to eight milliliters, indicating that she's added eight milliliters to that first test tube. She'll go ahead and com 
continue to repeat this process going down the line, um, adding the different volumes of the stock solution to each test tube. So again, you see her drawing up the stock solution into the pipette up to the zero line, and then she's gonna go ahead and go over to the next test tube. And in this tube, I believe she's gonna add six milliliters of the stock solution. And you see there in the video that it's being drawn down to six milliliters. So I think you get the idea. She's gonna go ahead and do this to all of the test tubes, adding the correct volumes of stock solution. So we'll go ahead and speed this video up, play it back at maybe double time so that we can get this done a little bit faster. And I'll let you watch as she adds the water to each to complete the dilution exercise. So, so far here, what you see is that each of the test tubes has received different volumes of the stock solution, decreasing as we go from left to right. And what we'll then do is come back and fill these back with water to make the total volume of each of them 10 milliliters. So now the experimenter has put some distilled water into the beaker. She's gonna use that same pipette to dispense water into each of those test tubes. So that the total volume in each is 10 milliliters. So in the first test tube, she's gonna to need to add two milliliters of distilled water. And in the next test tube, she'll add four milliliters of water and so on and so forth. Again, we'll go ahead and speed this video up so that we don't have to watch the whole thing happen. Again, we'll go ahead and speed this video up to maybe double time so that we can get this done a little bit faster for you. And you just watch the experimenter here, just continuously adding the various volumes of water to each of the test tubes. So now she's all done, and the total volume in each of the test tubes is 10 milliliters. And we can go and zoom in on the different test tubes, and you can visibly see that the test tubes on the left are darker, and the ones on the right are lighter. That the, the first test tube on the left there has the greatest concentration of blue dye number one, and the test tube on the right has the lowest concentration of blue dye number one. You can imagine that that first test tube that we're talking about on the left is going to absorb the most light. It's gonna have the greatest absorbance. And as the concentration of blue dye number one decreases as we go to the right, you can imagine that that absorbance is gonna be going down as well. That the lower the concentration of the blue dye number one, the less light that's absorbed by the solution. And again, we can use that information to create what's called a calibration curve to figure out the concentration of the unknown solution. So now it's time to start inserting our solutions into the cuvette, which will then stick into the spectrophotometer. But before we can do that, we actually need to calibrate our spectrophotometer. So what you see our experimenter doing here is they're putting some distilled water into the cuvette, and we're putting that cuvette with the distilled water into the spectrophotometer. And what you see that I'm doing on my computer is I'm going to calibrate the spectrophotometer by basically telling it that right now, what's in there is water, and so there should be zero absorbance. We're basically setting the zero absorbance level for the spectrophotometer by putting some distilled water in there. Now, what you see on the screen is that it actually takes about 90 seconds for the, the lamp in the spectrophotometer to warm up. So rather than wait 90 seconds, I went ahead and jumped it forward for you. Um, so as 90 seconds have passed, the lamp is warm. Now I can go ahead and click that button that says finish calibration. And so basically by clicking that button, I'm, again, I'm saying that what is in the spectrophotometer right now is distilled water. 
and that this should be read as zero absorbance. So now that we've calibrated our spectrophotometer and set that zero absorbance level, we can start to insert our solutions into the cuvette to then measure the absorbance curve with the spectrophotometer. So what you see here is the experimenters go in using that uh, micropipette to transfer some of that stock solution into the cuvette, and then we go ahead and stick that into the spectrophotometer. And what you see is the computer screen readout of the absorbance curve. Now what's cool is that it shows the absorbance of all of the various wavelengths. And what you might notice is that it's the red wavelengths that are the most absorbed. The solution is blue because those blue wavelengths are not being absorbed. They are the ones that have almost zero absorbance. And so what I want to do is I want to determine what wavelength is being most absorbed by this solution. It's at that wavelength that I want to measure the absorbance of for all of my different solutions. And so it's looking like that wavelength where the absorbance is the highest is going to be at about 631 nanometers or so. And so now I'm going into the experimental design of the software here, and I'm asking it to read the absorbance only at that 631.1 nanometer mark. And so now the, the screen will change a bit, and it will only report the absorbance at 631.1 nanometers. And so that's what you see here in the lower left-hand corner. That number that's fluctuating down there is the absorbance of the stock solution of blue dye number one, that 7.3 micromolar solution. So you probably want to write that number down. Again, that's the absorbance of the stock solution. So now we've pulled the stock out of the spectrophotometer. And we're going to start to move on to all of our other reference solutions two through seven. And so that's what you see here is the experiment has moved on to solution two that was made with eight milliliters of stock and two milliliters of water. She's transferring some of it into the cuvette and then into the spectrophotometer. And you can see again there in the lower left hand corner the absorbance of solution two. Now it's time we'll go ahead and move on to the next solution, solution number three. Experimenter is getting it ready here. She's starting to transfer some of solution three from that test tube into the cuvette. She's being very careful to only touch the ridged side of the cuvette. You don't want to touch the smooth side that the light is passing through because smudges would cause a greater absorbance. And so again, there's the absorbance of solution three. So as you keep moving down the line, we'll move on to solutions four, five, six, and seven and measure the absorbance of each. And so that's what you'll start to see here. This is solution number four being transferred into the cuvette. You want to make sure you fill it up high enough so that the light can actually pass through the solution. You don't need to fill the cuvette up all the way to the top, but you do want to fill it up about three quarters of the way up to be sure that the light's going to go through that solution. And again, there's the absorbance of that solution there in the lower left hand corner. So again, moving on to the next solution, transferring some into the cuvette. Again, careful not to touch the smooth side. And the absorbance is again right there above my head. This is solution six into the cuvette. into the spec, and again, there's the absorbance. So the experiment is getting ready. The last solution here, the last reference solution, solution number seven, was made from one milliliter of stock and nine milliliters of water. Should have the lowest absorbance of all, it's, it's the most clear, so the least amount of light is being absorbed. 
So now you have the absorbance of all the reference solutions. You should know the absorbance of them and you should know the concentrations of them. What you can do now with that data is you can create what's called a calibration curve. And what you'll do is you'll plot the absorbance on the y-axis as a function of concentration. And you should get a nice straight line. That's what's called the calibration curve. You can use that calibration curve to then determine the unknown concentration of the sports drink. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and insert the sports drink into the cuvette and we're going to measure the absorbance of the sports drink. And then from the calibration curve, we can use that absorbance to determine the concentration of the unknown. And so here the experimenter is using the micropipette to move some of that sports drink with the unknown blue number one dye concentration in there. She stuck some into the cuvette. She notices that she might have spilled a little bit on the side, so she's using her Kim wipes to go ahead and clean the sides nice and clean so that that doesn't interfere with the measurement. We're sticking the sports drink into the spectral photometer and the absorbance is red. So again, you can use that absorbance along with your calibration curve from all of those known concentrations to determine the concentration of the sports drink. So that's it. That's the whole lab. I hope you enjoyed it. I think it's pretty cool. We used light. We shine light through different solutions. And we're going to use the amount of light that was absorbed to determine the concentration of blue dye number one in a sports drink bought from the grocery store using our calibration curve. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, go ahead and comment down below, and I'll do my best to answer them. See you later.